The film begins with showing a house in the middle of a forest in Argentina that belongs to a man named Doak, who is a former government secret agent. But ever since his brother was killed by a mafia boss named Carlo, Doak chose to leave his work as secret agent and live alone in the middle of this forest. Not long after, Doak hears suspicious noises from someone that trying to infiltrate his house. Doak then quickly checks it out and manages to catch the intruder. However, the intruder turns out to be Doak's own niece named Joanna. Doak then brings Joanna inside and asks her how she found out about his whereabouts. Upon hearing this, Joanna replies that she was informed by her mother. After that, Doak invites Joanna to dinner, and they have a serious conversation. During their conversation, Joanna mentions that ever since her father, which was Doak's brother, died, she hasn't been able to live peacefully and always haunted by the memory of her late father. Therefore, Joanna came to Doak's house because she wants a change of atmosphere and hopes to forget about her father. The following morning, Joanna and Doak are seen playing chess, where Joanna is shown very skilled and easily defeats Doak. After that, Doak sees on his CCTV monitor that some people are approaching his house. At that moment, Doak asks Joanna if she invited her friends, but Joanna answers no. After hearing this, Doak quickly grabs his weapon. Doak also asks Joanna to hide in her room, while he deals with the intruders. Shortly after, Doak manages to eliminate one of the intruders and asks Joanna to hide in the underground room. At the same time, Doak is attacked again by another man, leading to a fierce fight. After a long duel, Doak finally manages to defeat the man. But the leader of the group also attacking him, who turns out to be the right-hand man of the mafia boss named Monty, who had previously killed his brother. His arrival there is to kidnap Joanna on his boss's orders. But Doak, unwilling to give up, tries to fight Monty, leading to another intense fight. In the end, Doak manages to defeat Monty and quickly takes Joanna away from there. During their journey, Doak contacts a long-haired man named Will, who used to be Doak's neighbor. It turns out, Doak had entrusted some of his weapons to Will before, so he asks Will to meet him immediately at their usual spot. Upon arrival, Doak tells Will that he has just been attacked by a group of people and he currently needs the weapons he had entrusted to Will before. However, Will is currently busy and promises to give the weapons to Doak tomorrow morning. In the end, Doak understands and leaves from there to go to the house of one of his former colleagues in the special agency, named Nancy. Doak then entrusts Joanna to Nancy, while Doak will go to meet his former boss nicknamed the leader in the special agency and promising to return soon. Not long after, Doak is seen meeting with the leader, where Doak tells the leader that his house has just been attacked by a highly trained group of people, so he asks for permission to eliminate them all. Doak also plans to recruit his former team members when he was still a special agent. He also needs permission because if something happens, his leader will protect Doak and the team from legal trouble. After hearing all of Doak's explanations, the leader finally grants permission. Shortly after, Doak returns to Nancy's house. But upon arrival, Doak only sees the house in disarray and Nancy severely injured. At that moment, Nancy could only apologize and tells Doak that Joanna has been kidnapped by a group of people. Doak then takes Nancy to the hospital for treatment. After Nancy receives medical attention, Doak immediately returns to Nancy's house and enters the secret room to contact each of his former team members in the special agency one by one. The first person Doak contacts is a man named Raj, who is the best hacker that lives in the Middle East. At that moment, Doak asks Raj to come to the headquarters tomorrow morning because there is an urgent mission they need to complete. Initially, Raj is prohibited by his wife, but he chooses to go to meet Doak as his former teammate. After that, Doak contacts another former colleague in Mexico, named Malo. Besides being a skilled fighter, Malo also has expertise in defusing and assembling bombs. Doak tells Malo that he needs his help and hopes Malo will come to his headquarters tomorrow morning. In the end, Malo agrees to come because he considers Doak as his own brother. Doak then contacts his last colleague named Sophia, who has above-average martial arts skills and is also Doak's former lover when they were on the same team in the special agency. Doak immediately asks Sophia to come to the headquarters tomorrow morning because he needs her help. The scene then shifts to Joanna, who is being held captive by Carlo. At that moment, Carlo reassured Joanna that he will never harm her as long as Doak obeys his orders. But if Doak refuses, then Joanna will end up like her father. 
Shortly after, Carlo contacts Doak, who is currently at the hospital with Will. Carlo asks Doak to kidnap a female nuclear scientist. Because he is relying on the scientist to make nuclear weapons for his personal interests. After that, Carlo sent a detailed file where Doak could find the scientist. And if Doak refuses or betrays him, then Doak will never see Joanna again. The next day, Doak former colleagues in the special team arrive, where Doak warmly welcomes them, including Sophia as his former lover. After that, Doak immediately takes them flying to the location where they can find the scientist. During the journey, Doak explains to his colleagues that his niece, Joanna, has been kidnapped by Carlo, who previously killed his brother where Carlo demands him to kidnap a nuclear scientist. And if Doak refuses, Carlo will kill Joanna. Therefore, Doak asks for help from his three colleagues because he believes that together they can handle all of this and he doesn't want to give the scientist to the mafia boss because he just wants to catch Carlo. After that, Doak asks Sophia about her current relationship, but Sophia only replies that Doak doesn't need to know about it because it was not his concern. Shortly after, Doak and his team arrive near the scientist's factory, where Doak strategizes with his team before starting the mission. After a lengthy discussion, Doak and Sophia will disguise themselves as employees and enter the factory to kidnap the scientist. Meanwhile, Mala will secure the conditions outside, and Raj along with Will will guard from inside the car while hacking the CCTV. Not long after, Sophia and Doak began to disguise themselves as factory employees. While, Malo begins incapacitating the guards outside, while Raj and Will also start their actions by hacking the CCTV system and providing instructions to Doak and the others. Shortly after, Doak and Sophia successfully enter and immediately head to the scientist's room. However, they end up trapped in a glass room because Sophia entered the wrong password. At the same time, Raj continues trying to hack the system to save Doak. But unfortunately, the system is protected by multiple layers of passwords. So, Malo creates an explosion, which causing panic among the people there. Meanwhile, Doak and Sophia start running out of breath as there is no oxygen in the glass room. Fortunately, thanks to Malo's explosion, the system malfunctions, and the glass room opens automatically. Quickly, Doak and Sophia left the room and pretended to be assigned to save the scientist. After that, Doak and his team immediately took the scientist into the car. However, Doak drove his car recklessly, which aroused suspicion among the other guards. Finally, Doak's car was chased by guards. During the chase, Sophia tries to convince the scientist by telling her that they are all former special agents who will save her. However, Sophia mentions that there's no time to explain now and promising to explain everything later when they're safe. At the same time, Doak continued to be chased and shot by the guards, so Malo became angry and threw a bomb at the guards' car, causing a large explosion in both vehicles. After that, they were blocked by two other guard cars in front. However, Doak managed to break through and finally escape all the guards' pursuit. After that, Doak and his team immediately moved to the private plane they had prepared earlier. Not long after, Doak and the others brought the scientist to their base. Where the scientist asks what they are going to do with her, Doak immediately explains that they are protecting her because a mafia boss named Carlo wanted to kidnap her. Dokes also explains that Carlo had kidnapped his nephew and demands Doak to exchange his nephew for the scientist. However, Doak made it clear that he would not do that. Instead, he plans to trap Carlo by pretending to hand over the scientist. At the same time, Carlo contacts Doak and asks him to arrange an exchange between Joanna and the scientist. Upon hearing this, Doak agrees to the request, where they agree to meet at one of the bridges in the middle of the city. Before leaving, Doak and his team strategize about the plan they will use. At that moment, Doak suggests that he will meet Carlo alone, while the others should monitor from a distance. Doak also decides not to bring the scientist because he intends to lead Carlo to a certain location. Shortly after, Doak and his team are visited by Nancy, who has just been discharged from the hospital. Nancy is warmly welcomed, and they continue their discussion about the strategy. Shortly after, Doak goes alone to meet Carlo, while his other teammates wait at the headquarters. However, when Doak leaves, Raj manages to track Joanna's location, who is being held captive in the empty building. Quickly, Raj immediately takes Malo and Nancy to rescue Joanna in the empty building. Meanwhile, at the headquarters, Sophia and Will will guard the scientist. 
Not long after, Doak arrives at the designated meeting place with Carlo. But when Carlo contacts Doak, he warns him not to try to trap him because he will be the one that trapping Doak. On the other hand, Raj, Nancy, and Malo have just arrived at the empty building to rescue Joanna. But it turns out, there is no one there and it's just Carlo's trap. Upon knowing this, Doak immediately contacts Raj and tells them all to return to headquarters because Carlo might have lured them out of the headquarters. So, Carlo could easily kidnap the scientist. After that, they all rush back to headquarters. Unfortunately, the headquarters was in chaos and Will is severely injured. It turns out, Carlo and his henchmen have attacked their headquarters to kidnap the scientist. Luckily, the scientist is safe because she is hiding with Sophia in the ventilation shaft. That night, Doak decides to move to the second headquarters, which is located in the wreck of a ship. At that moment, Doak and the others immediately rearrange their strategy to save Joanna without handing over the scientist. Shortly after, Carlo contacts Doak again and demands him to hand over the scientist that night. Carlo also threatened to kill Joanna if Doak does not immediately surrender the scientist. In the end, Doak agrees, but he wants to hear Joanna's voice first. Doak then promises Joanna that he will soon set her free. After that, Doak immediately rearranges the strategy by asking Nancy to hand over the scientist to Carlo. But the person handed over is not the real the scientist, but Sophia will disguise herself as the scientist, while the real the scientist will be guarded by Raj. After everyone understand the plan, they immediately start their mission, where Nancy successfully deceives the guards by bringing Sophia disguised as the scientist. Once inside, Doak and Malo, who are hiding in the trunk of the car, quickly follow through the back entrance. During their journey, Doak and Malo have to confront Carlo's henchmen, leading to a shootout. Afterward, Doak asks Raj to cut off all the electricity here. When the power goes out, Carlo immediately realizes that something is wrong. So, he quickly takes Joanna to the rooftop. On the other hand, Raj is waiting in the parking lot with the real The Scientist. But shortly after, he sees Monty and his men approaching, leading to a fight. Unfortunately, Raj is knocked unconscious after getting outnumbered and Monty takes the real The Scientist to Carlo. At the same time, Carlo, who is already on the rooftop with Joanna, intends to escape using a helicopter. Luckily, Nancy and Sophia arrive. But the Mafia boss realizes that it's not the real The Scientist and point their guns at each other. At the same time, Monty appears, holding the real The Scientist hostage. Eventually, Nancy and Sophia have to lower their weapons to prevent Joanna and the Scientist from being shot. However, Carlo shoots Nancy, causing her to fall. Sophia then retaliates and manages to kill Monty. Shortly after, Doak arrives, holding the scientist hostage, threatening to kill her if Carlo does not release Joanna. At that moment, Doak is certain that Carlo desperately needs the scientist to assemble a nuclear weapon for him. But, Doak swiftly takes advantage of Carlo's carelessness. In the end, Doak successfully avenges his brother's death after killing the Mafia boss. But another problem arises because Joanna is left dangling on the edge of the building after slipping. With all his might, Doak tries to rescue Joanna, and eventually succeeds. Several days later, Doak and his team celebrating their success from the previous mission. At that moment, the leader contacts Doak and asks him with his team to gather for a new mission. Upon hearing this, Doak immediately gathers his team to meet the leader, and the film ends. Moral lesson from the story, always double-check your passwords before you get trapped in a glass room with no oxygen or you might end up relying on your friends to blow things up for you, which can get pretty messy.